Cannon, the 96th Test Wing Vice Commander. Thank you, Mike. Uh, as Mr. Spade said, I'm uh, Colonel Monty Cannon. I'm the uh, Vice Commander of the 96th Test Wing at Eglin Air Force Base, and I'm the Senior Officer over the search and rescue uh, operations that have been ongoing. First of all, I want to thank you so much uh, for your patience uh, during what has been, as you can imagine, a very difficult and trying time. We've taken a slow and methodical approach to it, so I appreciate your patience. At this time, I can report that we have located the wreckage of the UH-60 Black Hawk that was reported missing Tuesday evening. At this point, we are not hopeful for survivors, and we are transitioning our search and rescue operation to a recovery and accident investi safety investigation by a team from the Army Combat Readiness Center, the Louisiana Air National, or Army National Guard, uh, and the U.S. Marine Corps Marine Special Operations Command. That uh, transition is ongoing at this time. They're getting up to speed. Team Eglin, Team Hurlburt uh, stand ready to support as they attempt to uh, continue the rescue op or re recovery operations and uh, attempt to determine uh, cause. At this point, our thoughts and prayers uh, go out to Louisiana Air National Guard, U.S. Marine Corps, Marine Special Operations Command, the units, family and friends of all involved in this uh, uh, tragic event. At this time, uh, I cannot release any names uh, any or any other information about the personnel involved. Uh, at this point, uh, if you have any questions on those, those will have to be answered by the Louisiana Air National Guard, the Marine Corps, or Marine Special Operations Command. A team effort between Team Eglin, Team Hurlburt, numerous, uh, the Coast Guard, numerous federal, state, and local agencies has been outstanding. I also want to say a big thank you to all of the communities in Northwest Florida for their tremendous outpouring of support. It has been truly humbling. At this point, I would like to introduce to you my Chief of Fire and Rescue Services, Mark Giuliano. He has been the on-scene incident commander throughout the last uh, day and a half of search and rescue operations, and he'll tell you a little bit about more of what the team's been uh, doing. Chief Commander, for at least the first 24 hours of this incident, and uh, I'm gonna kind of describe what happens uh, and where we are to, at this point, okay? So uh, the night before last, at approximately 10 p.m., we were notified, Eglin Fire Department was notified of a potential downed aircraft in the Santa Rosa Island Sound. Uh, we responded to assets immediately. In fact, we have a fire station on the island, so those assets were on scene immediately. I arrived on scene at approximately 11.30 p.m. and uh, immediately was uh, put in contact with the air crew that was still on site. All right. uh, I was told at that point we had an aircraft down with they were asking for our assistance. So at that point there, uh, we initiated uh, search and rescue operations requesting boats from local fire departments, the Iceville Fire Department, Coast Guard, uh, Mid-Bay, Fish and Wildlife assets were requested. Now understand, it's about 11.30 going on midnight. The conditions out there were very, very, very dense fog. They could not see. They were probably traveling about less than five miles an hour out there, afraid to run into each other and any hazard that might be out there. What they were doing at that point was looking for any survivors that may be in the water. Okay, Those operations continued through the night. I had requested additional assets to, uh, to come in from the Coast Guard boats with sonar, side scan sonar. Uh, we had very limited assets at that point. Until those assets arrived on scene late yesterday morning, we were pretty much searching in the blind, just basically out on the surface. We were also responding to reports of debris uh, washing up on the north side of the, of the bay. Uh, we had assets on that side here at 98 responding to any responses or calls of debris or human remains that were washing up on the side. Uh, we were gathering those and bringing them back to my location where we had a staging area operation set up to handle that kind of stuff. 9 a.m. yesterday, late morning, I'll say late morning, uh, we did have a hit from sonar on what we thought was the aircraft in the middle of the bay. We immediately sent divers out there to get eyes on the target to confirm that it was the helicopter. We sent a diver down basically with a snorkel and he could see from the depth of about 25 feet, he could see that that was the helicopter. At that point, we 
got back to my command post, and the game plan was to do a side scan sonar mapping of the bottom of the bay. So we could really see what was going on down there and develop, develop our dive plan from there. That took about an hour to do. Once we got the scan, we looked at it, we confirmed, yeah, here's the helicopter. It's broken up into several pieces. Uh, we determined what we were going to do, what teams were assembled, who was going to do what. Let me get my time straight here. About 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the, uh, the search and recovery, or sorry, search and rescue uh, was still ongoing. That's when we put divers into the water to start retrieving uh, the air crew. Operations continued till about 1800 last night. As you saw yesterday, the fog rolled in yesterday afternoon, hampering operations on the water. The water conditions turned to uh, almost zero visibility underwater. So the crews that were down there were struggling to uh, do what they had to do. So at approximately uh, 1830 last night, uh, we had to stop operations because of the conditions out there in the water. Now, we are uh, in the, as the Colonel stated, a recovery phase. The Coast Guard has uh, contacted a, a salvage unit out of Mobile. I don't know the name of that, that agency. You have to ask the Coast Guard that. But we expect them to come on site late late afternoon, early evening. But as you can see with the conditions, we have some weather coming in later on. They are probably not going to be able to start any operation tonight. I don't know what the weather is tomorrow, but I believe we have some more weather coming in tomorrow, so that may hamper the beginning of their operation. Okay. So at this point, as the Colonel stated, we've basically started our transition to the Army, handing the site over to them. Accident investigation team is on site. We're working with them, giving them the debris and the things that we've recovered so they can start doing what they have to do with the investigation. Okay, I want to say, as the Colonel stated, this has been an outstanding operation. I've had phone calls from all of the southern Gulf states, people offering assistance for boats, sonar, food. I mean, people are getting my phone call. I have no idea where they get my number, but they're calling offering assistance, and that's been tremendously overwhelming to me as the incident commander. So at this time, if you have any specific questions as incident commander, I'll try to answer those. The that flight data recorder, sir. been brought up yet? We have retrieved remains, okay? Uh, that's all I can say at this point. Uh, we have a uh, armed services medical examiner out there on site right now, and he's working that stuff. What caused the helicopter to crash? I couldn't tell you that. Um, the investigation team, the Army investigation team, will talk to crews. They'll, they'll get that flight data information. They'll determine what caused that. Is, is, is the data recorder still in the in, in the chopper, or did they make an effort to bring it up? Um, the recorder, as, as far as I know, is still in uh, the record. We have not retrieved that. Can you tell us about the training mission that they were doing when this accident happened? I could not tell you that. I couldn't speak to what they were doing out there that night. Are all victims accounted for, now. sir? Are all, all personnel on board accounted for one way or the other, sir? At this time, again, recovery operations are still ongoing, so uh, I, 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 that's all I can tell you. Where exactly did it go down? Out in the middle of the sound. Um, generally, yeah. generally east or west, what area? Uh, basically east of us right now. Near what road? The real uh, road is? I can't give you a road out there. It's, like you last time you lost contact around 8.30, <coughs> but you didn't get called until 10. Why the delay? Uh, the Army was following their uh, normal protocols uh, when they have a missing aircraft. So uh, once we got the call at 10 o'clock, we responded. Where are the pieces of the helicopter right now? They're over in my, uh, my sleeping area on the other side. So so there are multiple pieces. I mean, we're talking about like dozens of pieces, or you know, how did it break up? Can you tell yet? Uh, it was uh, certainly a high impact uh, crash, so we do have uh, a lot of pretty, a lot of pieces. That'll be that'll be handled by the, uh, the safety investigation board. They'll look at all the data and, and 